While there are a number of different types of long guns on the market today, we are gonna be focusing on the mechanics and the shooting performance of your standard semi-automatic box-loaded carbines. Once you understand the basics behind how these firearms function, it is very easy to load, unload, and shoot. You don't need to take a bunch of formalized classes to learn this. These firearms will be loaded using a box magazine. This is not a clip. The bullets are inside of this, and it's going to load one at a time into the firearm. Your firearm, or your carbine in this case, will have a magazine well located somewhere on the weapon. It could be towards the rear of the stock if you're shooting a bullpup, or it could be further forward like on this AR-15. You will take the magazine, you insert it into this magazine well until you hear a click or until the magazine cannot be removed from the weapon. But this does not mean necessarily the weapon is loaded as there is no round in the chamber. There's just a magazine ready to go for the weapon to be chambered. On all of these types of rifles, you are going to have something called a charging handle. This is what is used to reciprocate the bolt and essentially load a round from the magazine into the breech. It's really into the barrel, so it's ready to fire. On some guns, like on Kalashnikovs, the charging handle will be on the right side of the weapon. On some, it's gonna be on the left. On some, you have to pull a latch out and then it exposes so you can reciprocate the bolt. But then on the most common rifle in America, it is located here on the top. On an AR-15, I recommend using one finger. You are going to pull the charging handle all the way back. It's going to be a little stiff. It also depends some on the weapon that you're using uh, or even the buffer spring in the weapon itself because you are fighting against the recoil spring that allows the weapon to function. You are then going to let go. Do not ride the bolt forward. That's a great way to induce a malfunction with what is called out of battery where the round is not actually fully seated in the breech and then you're gonna to have to go through some malfunction clearing. Now the weapon is actually hot, it is actually loaded because there's a round in the breech, uh, seated in the barrel, ready to fire, and my magazine is here ready to uh, keep feeding the weapon as I shoot. Most modern firearms will have a safety. It's generally located near where your firing hand will be. In this case, it's a 90 degree throw lever, just like this. On some guns, you're gonna push it forward. Some guns, it might even be in the trigger guard. Some guns, it may be a cross block safety. Find the safety on your weapon, and I highly recommend you use it when the weapon is chambered, simply because the trigger guard is exposed, unlike a handgun in a holster. To unload the rifle, you'll be pressing the magazine release first. It should be located somewhere near where your firing hand is, similar to the safety. In this case, on an AR-15, it's located right where my firing finger will be as a right-handed shooter. I'm gonna press that button, and the magazine will either fall out, or I will pull the magazine out myself. On some firearms, you may have to strip the magazine simply because it won't actually fall out of the weapon with gravity. At this point, now I'm going to take the charging handle once again, pull it straight to the rear, nice and fast. You will see that a round has ejected, but I'm not going to assume the weapon is empty. I'm still gonna do a visual inspection of the breech, make sure the weapon is actually empty, visual inspection of the magazine well, and now I can see that the weapon is indeed empty. Most modern firearms will feature what is called a bolt lock or a bolt release. It's a small little paddle or should be a small paddle that when it is articulated, when the charging handle is pulled to the rear, will keep the bolt manually held open. So now I have both hands free and I can do whatever I need to do to clear the weapon or clear the malfunction. Now that you know how the rifle functions, let's talk about how to shoot it. To shoot the rifle with optimal performance, we are gonna be placing the buttstock into our shoulder pocket. And the way we create the shoulder pocket is by rolling our shoulder forward. What this does is trap the stock so that it's not gonna jump out of the way. It's not gonna cause a bunch of wobbliness to our shooting. And then I'm gonna take my support hand and I'm gonna be placing that halfway down my rail and create a natural bend in my elbow. What that's gonna do is give me a natural suspension system. It's gonna disconnect the rifle from my core. So as I'm shooting and moving, I'm able to control the rifle just fine. It also puts my arm far enough down the rail that I can control the muzzle and whatever I have out there, suppressors and lasers and other weight like that. If I position my hand here on the magwell, I'm not gonna have that good solid recoil control or the ability to drive between targets. 
Just because I have rolled my shoulder forward into the rifle does not mean I have to always square up to the target. But a good rule of thumb for a good recoil management stance is that my feet are wider than my shoulders and one foot, either foot, is behind the shoulders. That will give me solid recoil management. If you're shooting a rifle with iron sights, you are going to have to align the front sight post of that particular weapon with the rear sight aperture. And there's a lot of different versions and types out there. But if you're using a red dot, which is what most guns have nowadays, you are simply gonna use both eyes open and you are gonna position that dot on the target wherever you want the round to hit, provided you have actually zeroed your weapon. And I highly recommend you go out there, download a proper zero target, research what zero your particular weapon is going to need and actually sit down and confirm zero and make sure you have a solid zero on that gun because that's what's going to allow you to hit stuff. A major difference between shooting rifles and handguns is your optics or your iron sights are going to sit much higher from the barrel. This is known as hide over bore or your mechanical offset. So if I'm up close to a target and I'm putting the optic on that target, well, my barrel is actually way down here. So that's gonna cause some issues if you're shooting around cover, around vehicles, or you're trying to take a very intricate shot up close, you're gonna to have to hold a little bit high. I highly recommend you make it a habit of articulating the safety on your rifle. A simple rule of thumb for this is, as I am taking the rifle to my eyes, as I'm getting a sight picture, as I'm aligning my iron sights, my safety comes off for shooting. When my eyes leave the optic, when I am depressing the rifle for whatever reason, the safety comes on. With training, it becomes so effortless that it's not gonna slow you down, it's not gonna inhibit any of your shooting, but it's gonna give you that uh, safeguard since the trigger guard is not covered like on a pistol going into a holster. Thankfully, with a rifle, trigger management isn't quite as paramount as it is on a handgun. Since the trigger weight is much less than that of the weight of the rifle, and you just have a lot more control on the weapon. But we do still wanna keep the pad of our finger on the trigger itself. We don't wanna be completely knuckling the trigger if we can help it. And we're just going to be pressing that to the rear as fast as we see our sights to get quality hits. At some point, your rifle is gonna go dry. There's kind of two techniques behind reloading the rifle efficiently. The first one we have is upon going dry, tuck the stock underneath your, uh, underneath your arm in your armpit, dump the magazine. The magazine should be able to fall out just fine depending on the weapon. Retrieve your new magazine from your chest rig belt or wherever it happens to be, your back pocket. Insert into the magazine well. Drop the bolt however you decide to do that. Bolt release, charging handle, bad lever, however your particular weapon works. And the weapon is now reloaded. The other technique is I keep the rifle shouldered actually in my shoulder. I simply turn slightly to insert the new magazine and then I'm back on the gun and it's just a little bit faster, a little bit more efficient, but both techniques work very well at getting the rifle reloaded. There's a lot of different malfunctions that you can encounter with a rifle and I'm not gonna go over all of them, but one of the most common ones that I see are people having a failure to feed. Typically speaking, what it is, is they have not fully seated their rifle into the magazine well. So after firing their first shot that is chambered, the bolt reciprocates, doesn't pick up a new round, they get a click, and the way we can fix this is doing tap, ensure that the rifle magazine is fully seated, tap rack, now I have chambered a new round, and now I can resume shooting. That will solve a lot of malfunctions, a lot of stoppages that we end up seeing on the range with newer shooters. Another common malfunction is the double feed, where I have two rounds trying to make their way into the chamber. What we're gonna do to fix this one is simply locking the bolt to the rear, which you should know how to do on your rifle, Removing the magazine, sometimes the rounds come out, sometimes they don't. I can then insert my fingers to dislodge the rounds, or I can simply take my magazine now because they fell out, reinsert the magazine, drop the bolt, and the rifle's back up and running. Good muzzle awareness is a baseline skill and competency that everyone handling a rifle should have. To move with a rifle safely, there are a couple techniques that you can use to ensure that your rifle is pointed in a safe direction. Now it's important to understand that these may or may not work in certain scenarios with certain amounts of people or whether people are above or below, but what we have is the high ready where we are going to be angling the rifle in an upward position. This allows us to see exactly where the rifle is and keep it not pointed at people. The other is a low ready, and this is going to depend obviously based on distance of people and how many people there are. I can have my low ready at, you know, here, or I can go all the way and depress it against my body. And in both cases, I'm in full control of my muzzle and I can move around safely with people and I'm not going to be flagging unnecessarily. While we wanna minimize unnecessary flagging as much as possible, it's an unrealistic expectation to think it can never happen, especially in a group scenario or there, where there's a lot of people. And this is yet another reason why we wanna have good discipline with our safety so that if 
potentially there is some flagging involved in that particular scenario. We do still have that safety as a redundancy to prevent horrible catastrophes from happening. Moving with a rifle is a lot less complicated than some instructors out there make it. Once you have a good understanding of muzzle awareness, having the rifle at high port or having the rifle at low port and having a good understanding of where that is in relation to other people, it is very easy to simply put the rifle in a safe direction and sprint with the weapon. You do not need to treat this like a vial of nitroglycerin or like a pair of scissors when you were a kid. You could simply pick up your feet and move with it, provided you have the fundamentals taken care of and you understand good muzzle awareness and you have a good habit of running the safety. So that's the basics to shooting a rifle. Now with dedicated, isolated, and very disciplined training, you can become very competent with a rifle in a short amount of time. You don't have to go take a bunch of high level tactical shooting classes to learn how to shoot because shooting, regardless of whether it's in a tactical scenario or not, is going to be the same. I have to align the sights. I have to hold the gun somehow, hopefully in a way that will control recoil well. And then it's just a matter of pressing the trigger. There's no tactical way to shoot a rifle. It all is the same. It's just shooting a gun while utilizing a good balance of speed and accuracy. Now, where do you go from here? Well, we have a lot of training materials on our website that's free. We've got breakdowns on each particular concept and principle that we outlined in this video that goes a little bit more into detail on some do's and don'ts and some demonstrations on how you can actually train that on your own. We also have a wide variety of drills that you can use to assess where you're at with your skill level, whether it is a high level or a lower level, beginner level of skill. So definitely hit up our website to check out more of the training that's available there. And make sure you're honest with yourself. Don't try to shoot way faster than you're actually capable of doing. Get the basics down first. The speed is going to come later. Make sure your rifle is fully zeroed and don't try to skip to doing the cool stuff because ultimately the cool stuff is being able to execute the basics consistently every time. Thanks for watching.